Hey guys, uh, welcome to a video series where I'm going to be constructing an X-Wing fighter from a set of parts that uh, a small team, uh, friends of mine, uh, put together. Uh, I had an idea to make a 1 12th scale X-Wing, which is still in progress. The pandemic sort of slowed everything down to a crawl, but that's fine. Um, as a sidebar, when we got to the point where everything could be grown uh, in sort of the baseline way, because growing something, making something double the size, I wanted to add more detail. Anyway, uh, I realized I could make a Studio Scale X-Wing hero properly. Uh, I know I've talked about this before and I will talk about this again because I want to do like a history of the X-Wing video at some point soon. Um, but I also thought it would be interesting uh, to show you guys what it takes to make a Hero X-Wing uh, from the solution that our little team came up with. It's not a kit. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the files aren't being sold. Uh, this isn't something that um, is being made available, which I feel kind of crappy about. Uh, however, uh, a lot of time uh, by very skilled individuals was put into this, and uh, we all agreed that uh, if somebody would come along and pay everybody like their professional rate for all of the CAD work that was done and everything, then sure, uh, it could be shared with the group. But you're talking like 20 grand because it's just we worked for like a year on this thing um, just as a labor of love. So uh, I had some parts made. I've grown some stuff myself. Uh, and this was all based on direct studies of Hero and Pyro but mostly hero components, shells that were given to me uh, by an ILMer. Uh, that's Ground Zero. That is the X-Wing. That is that is the one of the you know four heroes with the opening wings, uh, the close-up shot X-Wing. Anything that wasn't designed to go kaboom on screen. Uh, it's never been done before. Uh, it is wildly larger than you think. Uh, and I've had some comparison shots of. A, what we call the V5 X-Wing, which was the last iteration of the fan kit that I helped work on, um, trying to get it closer to the hero. Me personally, have I've been wanting to make a hero X-Wing for like, I don't know, 40 some odd years, but since getting into this scene, that's always been like a, a real desire, and we pulled it off um, with some uh, sort of embellishments, which I know would drive hardliners crazy, but I'll get into that later uh, as these videos progress. Anyway, so I wanted to start with uh, how I construct this, and and mainly because I'm going to be building more and more of these because I want to make like one of each, and this like a whole flying circus of, of X wings. There's like like six or seven. There's actually nine variants if you want to get crazy. Not all were heroes, but uh, I'll, I'll build one, and then like a year goes by. I built one last year, and then I completely forget what I did. Uh, so this is. <laughs> mostly half of it is so that I don't forget what I did the next time I want to make one and the rest of it is uh, just to satisfy some people's curiosity who are like what goes into this um, people that don't make these models or people that are new to the hobby or just someone that hasn't made this particular kind of thing uh, if you have a V5 X-Wing a lot of what I'm about to say uh, does translate because the V5 X-Wing wings are uh, essentially hero wings. So the armature and the wings uh, were put out there at a certain point, like in 2018, 2019 or so, um, and then just everybody got just completely burnt out and it, it, it's, it's gone now. Um, but yeah, the body and a lot of the, the like just dimensions on things are very unique to this. So um, with that apology that this is like a, I'm showing you something you can't have, sorry, um, out of the way, here's what I do to make one of these X-Wings. Okay, so where I like to start these days <laughs> is building the wing connections to the armatures. Uh, this allows me, especially with this newest iteration of the X-Wing, to make sure the fit and finish is correct, uh, you know, structurally. And uh, on this particular uh, design, I like to 
take a little bit of material out of these edges to allow the wings to open up just a smidge more than the heroes. The heroes opened at a certain degree. The pyros opened a little wider. Um, I like that slightly wider stance, so that's where I where I like to hit things. Okay, so this armature uh, is specifically for uh, what we call the Hero 2020, uh, and by we I mean uh, a couple of guys, Josh and Andre and I, that uh, that designed it, and it's really a sidebar to the 112th X-wing. Uh, project which is still going on so anyway so you've got like your standard bar except it does a dive and cuts in half and this allows for the slightly deeper cockpit tub which of course you'll see later uh, this is the same as all the other x-wing uh, armatures floating around out there and the scissor mechanism is the same except some material has been taken out right here that allows there to be a three millimeter gap. You can see it right there. And what that allows for is the folded cardstock that was on the heroes that completely blocks off this mechanism uh, visually once the model's built. So you have to assemble this thing with this gap. Uh, and there are I like to do two screws and then usually two pins. I guess you could do four screws if you wanted. And then this middle one will be where the wires for the uh, electronics go. It's pretty fiddly stuff and you have to really cram a lot of uh, stuff together, but I'm about to do it and it's, it's not hard. It's just, you know, a little tedious. Uh, each wing is laminated and by that I mean there is most of the wing and then uh, this laser cut acrylic piece. This allows you to see underneath and down in there, uh, just like the heroes. So if you tape those two inserts, you get this proper spacing on the wing. This is essentially what the wing will be like when it's closed. And if you hold it up to this wing bracket, you can see that it's flush here and here. So Taping this together just ensures that things aren't shifting. Tools I, I need for this include uh, a little drill. Uh, I have a little kind of action Makita drill. And a lot of this stuff is because my hands are such shit now. <laughs> and that's for pre-drilling the holes for the screws, these little screws. Um, a little baby screwdriver and a bunch of Allen wrenches. First off, uh, I have four little grub screws that, and uh, apologies, my thumb doesn't bend the way it used to bend because of uh, crazy uh, osteoarthritis. Um, grub screws with little nylon tips. Uh, and those go in these four holes up top. And that is to uh, use friction to set the resistance of the scissors. Uh, so these just clamp down onto the uh, main bar and provide a little bit of real world resistance. So you just sort of tighten them until you feel a little resistance and you can go from there. Um, and I, I should add a nice little touch here and I will provide this uh, a little bit of uh, modification. Uh, once this is on here there's these two little access holes so you can always access all four of these grub screws. So if the wings get loosey-goosey over time, I can come back in uh, and tighten it down, which is uh, kind of nice. Um, something I thought about while we were in the design phase of this particular hull. Uh, and I like to put a little magnet somewhere in here and this will just sit there with the power of magnets. No one knows how magnets work. Uh, it's magic. So. Yeah, four grub screws are next. All right, so nice and tight. I can, oh, Jesus, yeah, that is tight. Good. I will loosen this, of course, once the wings are assembled, but you can now get it so that it is completely aligned and not really going anywhere uh, at the moment. And I'll just take this little guy off for the moment. 
Okay, so we've got these wings and there's top R, top L, and that's uh, repeated twice on the wings. You don't have to worry about that at the moment. What you do have to worry about is making sure that these wings are flat and in line with each other and that they align with this side flush to this. So if you see, if you notice, all of these holes are shifted as far forward as they can be. That ensures uh, proper alignment there. Uh, there will be a little bit of blank space there. So uh, that's pretty much it for making sure everything's where it's supposed to be. So now you can mark where you want everything to be. And the wings will also have a little bit of play uh, that should sort of lock up a little bit um, once we continue with our build. Um, so don't worry if, if it's feeling like the wings are going woo. Um, I've always seemed to be able to get that corrected at some point. I can address it. Okay, so once you have all of the little holes drilled, you can take the scissors off. I do them one at a time because they go back in a very specific order. Uh, and this will allow me to actually use this to screw the little baby screws in, uh, which is a delight because this is very tedious. And you're essentially uh, sort of self-tapping the, the resin uh, when you do this, which is kind of cool. And just make sure again that this guy's flush. to do the two outer ones first just to make sure everything's aligned and I don't tighten that first one down quite yet if you've ever stretched canvas uh, it's sort of a similar little arty little there's a little art to it and then I'll hand tighten the last couple of turns Got yourself an X-wing wing with a metal bracket on it, uh, and now the two inners. Again, they will sort of self-tap. Now you can see you've got hole for the electronics and then you've broken through with these two screws. Um, take my X-Acto knife and I clear away that little bit of resin that was tapped, right? And then put a washer. This is the part where it gets real crazy. So there is not a lot of room. In fact, there's like no room. And the washer usually will sort of scrape downwards. Okay. Washer and nut. It's fiddly work, at least for me. I don't know how you guys are with this kind of stuff. 
Hopefully, my finger can hold the nut still while the... Yes? Yes. Okay, we're in business. And a little needle nose plier action to tighten that nut down. Nice and tight. And I'll, of course, run some glue in here, but, I mean, this is... This is strong. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, there you go. So that is one wing mounted. Uh, and then I'm going to put it back on here the right way. Yeah. <laughs> you really got to pay attention. That's why I only do like one wing at a time. If I took all four off, it'd be like, I don't know what's going on. And then I would just walk into the sea. <laughs> Now, I don't have to worry about covering these holes because that uh, paper cardstock is going to be covering it. Um, but I will get fancy dancy and run some epoxy sculpt over these screw holes just to clean them up. The only sad thing is that there will be a little bit of wire showing, um, but that is sort of like cannot be helped kind of thing. So, so there you have it. That's, um, that's one wing down, three to go. So... I'll do the other three and then come back. Okay, so we now have four wings correctly mounted to the armature, spaced correctly, and uh, ready to go on to the next step. So, making sure that these four holes are aligned upwards and making sure that this rod uh, has the cutout facing upwards. I'm gonna put this mounting hex, whatever, back on here, and it's very loose, and I'm going to seat this in to the lower hole. This will friction fit into that slot, and this cradles nicely in the back, and there we go. Yeah. So there will be some finagling. There always is. Uh, I'll probably have to remove a little material uh, at these bulkheads just to get everything to fit. But for the moment, I think I'm fine. Um, this little guy in the back will stick out further than you initially think. And that's because the butt plate is a little different uh, than what most kits uh, have in that you know, there's like this nice little hollow. So that will sit in there. This just needs to be close to the mounting uh, cover, but not sticking out and not, uh, not so far in uh, that you would have trouble threading a rod. So that's, uh, that's about right. You know where I'm going with that. Okay, so there is a no, there's another grub screw here and I like to have it sticking up uh, where the R2 covers. Uh, there, there's, there's four mount covers essentially, five mount covers essentially. There's a back one, there's the R2 unit, there's two side mounts, and there's a bottom one. I'm gonna have to cut this out um, and I'll get to that shortly. Uh, so I like to have, I've never mounted one uh, in the R2 hole. I'll mount it from the bottom when painting, uh, and I'll mount it from the, the underside, or the back and the bottom when painting. And that's about it. I might mount one from the side if I hang one on the wall. But anyway, for now, I'm going to tighten that guy down and have it pointing upwards. And as you can see, the other holes, you know, line up, and the bottom one would too, once I route that. Okay, so what I was mentioning before is that when you put the two hull halves together, right, and you see the R2, the wings will open. And the wings will open to a point where they physically encounter 
the cutouts on the top and the bottom holes. But as you can see, that is not as wide an X as uh, we generally imagine our X-Wings to, to look like. So a uh, little bit of uh, creative liberty, and this is just a personal thing. Um, I like to then go in and, as I said before, remove some material here, here, and on the bottom one. And as you can see, on this particular version of uh, the X-Wing that, that we had made, um, it's sort of uh, angled and then it's flat. So I like to just start grinding down on that angle and just leave it angled. Um, you're not going to notice really at all uh, from looking at it once everything's together. So that's the next step. And I like to look at uh, reference photography uh, when I'm doing that to get that wide stance. So it's that, that part's a little tedious, but that's what I'm going to do next. Oh, and I thought I'd like to mention real quick, um, yeah, I'm also going to route this out while I've got, you know, a uh, whole bunch of sanding and grinding to do. I will put a guide line with tape and it's just sort of an arbitrary, like, I don't know, one and a half millimeters or something and see where I get. And I might have to, you know, do it all over again. So it could be a little tedious, but the payoff is pretty awesome. Okay. So the wings are now done. Um, as I had mentioned before, uh, all four, you know, you've got this armature, you've got these four wings mounted with space for the, uh, the cardstock and for the laser cut wing parts. I'm going to leave it like this and I've decided to be kind to myself because I never think to do this anytime I build one of these, especially with a hero wing because it's so hollow. I'm going to build and paint the interfacing wings so that when I get to this, and I might actually even do all the outside of the wings too while I'm at it. Why not? Treat yourself, right? Um, and the way the cockpit is constructed, uh, a lot of it's from below and then from above. So I think the hull might be one of the last things to go together. Uh, so it's going to be a weird sequence of events probably compared to like building a Captain Cardboard or any of the ones that were, you know, pyro lineage that have solid components. Um, cause you don't have to mess around with all this like heartache. Um, so wings are done. As I had said, had to route out this bottom part on the body and I came down to that tape mark and I completely, uh, you know, hog this out at a bevel to sort of match those L brackets. Uh, and I also, there is a real fancy electronics, uh, rig that is going in here, uh, that does some really cool stuff. And there's a, a cable of a sort that has to pass from back to forward. So I hogged this out also, and now I realize I'm going to have to probably putty that after the electronics are in. So there's going to be a lot of like weird, oh yeah, okay, I guess I got to do that. The only thing major construction wise I have left to do on the hull now is make sure that these laser tubes are pushed through and that involves drilling and uh, sometimes you can get fancy with a brass tube. I don't think I need to do that with this because of the way we thought about its construction, but I might. Um, and also I will have to clean up some of the, the scribe lines. Some of them didn't quite make it through when I sanded things down. They're very, they're very light compared to the very deep scoring on a pyro. Um, and then I have to add all the chipping. Each Hero X-Wing was hand chipped with uh, styrene uh, in different ways. So that also is to come. But I just wanted to show at the end of this video, as I was saying before, you know, this goes in there into the bottom. And let's see, actually, I have to center that a little bit. I really manhandle this stuff. <laughs> There we go. And then this little fella goes on the top. And because I, as I said before, routed out that edge in the cutouts, the wings now open up a lot wider 
than they would have before. This is not quite pyro stance and it's just a little wider than hero. I just think this gives it like a, a more classic X-Wing look. Uh, again, personal preference. I'm sure somebody right now is screaming that I'm incorrect and good for you. Um, so thus concludes uh, the first steps in doing something to an X-Wing. Uh, I did this all in one day. I surprised myself. My hands are terrible. So I can't imagine that if somebody was working on old V5 parts that they would not be able to do this in a day. I think they could very easily do all of this in one sitting. So I did this in two sittings, but you know, not, not too horrific. So uh, tune in next time for whatever I decide is probably the smartest thing to do next because I'm just uh, not quite winging it, but I'm trying to be a little more careful about how I approach this smartly so that I don't have to, you know, go backwards at all. Um, and if anybody uh, has gone backwards halfway through a build because they wanted to do something different or decided to change something up, it's this guy. Okay, so see you later.